In this lesson, we're going to examine weight, normal force, and the net force, which is how we combine forces. Now, you guys are familiar with weight. Weight is the force due to gravity, and we've talked about gravity in the past. Uh, we talked about gravity when we talked about stars. We know the more massive an object is, the greater its gravitational pull. However, it's also affected by distance. Uh, the farther you are from something, the weaker its gravity, which is why we're really close to Earth. We can feel its gravitational pull. Uh, even though the sun is much more massive than Earth, it's way far away, so we don't feel its gravitational pull. Okay? Now, all objects with mass attract other objects with mass. That's the force that we call gravity. However, for most objects, that force is way too small to be noticed. We don't notice the gravitational attraction between uh, us and our neighbor, but there is one. We don't notice the gravitational attraction between our book and the pencil, but there is one. We do notice the gravitational attraction between our pencil and the floor because the earth is what's pulling that pencil down. The earth is huge. It has a lot of mass, and so its gravitational pull is felt by all objects near it, uh, and we call that force weight. Weight always pulls down towards earth's center. So weight is a special name for the force due to gravity pulling something down towards the center of earth. Because it's a force, we measure weight in newtons. I've had a lot of people try to tell me how heavy something is by telling me it's mass in kilograms. Mass is not a measure of force. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter in an object. Uh, and we do use kilograms to measure it. And there is a direct relationship between mass and weight because gravity depends on mass. The more massive something is, the stronger the gravitational force, which means more massive objects do weigh more than less massive objects. Um, but it's not the same unit. On Earth, we find the weight of an object by multiplying its mass in kilograms. It's very important that you measure its mass in kilograms by 9.8, and that'll give us its weight in newtons. Now, you guys should have actually found that in lab. You had to measure a variety of different objects, uh, and so you had mass down here, and you had weight over here, and if I have zero mass, then there's zero weight. But as you added mass, the weight should have gone up. And by finding the slope of this line, you actually find the relationship between weight and mass. Because weight is equal to the slope of that line, m, times uh, the mass in kilograms. And so that actually lets us find uh, the weight of an object if we know its mass. So multiplying the mass of an object by 9.8 gets us its weight. Uh, so mass and weight, not the same thing. Now, the next thing we looked at was the normal force. Normal is a mathematical term. It means perpendicular or at right angles to. So normal is the mathematical term for perpendicular, uh, and the normal force is the force a surface exerts on an object that rests on it, and that force is perpendicular to the surface. So when we have a book resting on our desk, then we have a force pulling down, and that force is called weight. That's caused by gravity acting on the object. And there's also a force pushing up, and that's the normal force. It's perpendicular. That means it's at a right angle to the surface and pushing against weight. And those two forces balance. They're going to cancel out. They're going to add up to zero. That's what balanced forces mean. However, if we were to incline that surface, if we make it a ramp, then these two forces don't balance anymore because weight is still pulling straight down, but now the normal force has to stay perpendicular to that surface. This is still a right angle. Well, these two forces don't pull in opposite directions. In fact, the weight and the normal force are not going to balance, and so this thing is actually going to accelerate down the ramp, which is why things roll downhill. Uh, and if we can go to the extreme case, if you have an object being pushed against a wall, then the normal force is actually this way, uh, and that's an N, and then the weight force is down. So the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface on which the object is resting. Now, last thing to look at is balance versus unbalanced forces and how we combine them. Now, we know that we are going to look at not just one force that acts on an object, but we look at all the forces that are acting on an object because we know balanced forces cause acceleration and unbalanced forces don't change motion. So with unbalanced forces, we can be at rest or we can be moving with a constant speed. So what we're really looking at is we're looking at the net force, which means we're adding all the forces together to see what's going to happen, to see the result. So balanced forces all cancel out, and that means the net force is zero newtons. That means if I have 10 newtons right, I have 10 newtons left, and 10 minus 10 is zero. They, they add up to zero. Unbalanced forces don't add up to zero. Okay, unbalanced forces do not cancel out. So when we have balanced forces acting on an object, I could say this is 10 newtons this way, uh, 10 newtons. I could say this is 10 newtons this way. 
uh, there would be a weight, I don't know, say 20 newtons, and because it's resting on the table, the table's pushing up with 20 newtons. Well, these 20 newtons cancel those 20 newtons, those 10 newtons cancel those 10 newtons, and what I could do is I could redraw this thing without any forces acting on it at all. And if there's no forces acting, then I know it's either still, or it's moving at a constant speed. It's not getting faster, it's not getting slower, it's just remaining at a constant velocity. Okay. Now, if the forces are unbalanced, then there, it's not going to be uh, a zero Newton force. And we're going to see how to combine forces when they're unbalanced. Now, in this case, if I had an object like this, and I only had one force acting on it in this direction, say four Newtons, that does not mean that the object is moving this way. What that means is the object is accelerating that way. So if you think about that, if the object was actually moving to the right and somebody gave it a push to the left, that's going to slow it down. Now, if the object was moving to the left, then giving it a push to the left is going to speed it up. So you've got to think about that. A force does not cause motion. A force causes a change in motion. So the last thing to look at um, is how do we deal with combining forces? What are the rules with that? Well, there's a couple. Forces can only be added if they're in the same direction or opposite direction. So that means if I have an object and I have uh, weight pulling down and the normal force pulling up, I can combine those forces because they're in opposite directions. However, if there's a third force pulling this way, I can't combine those. Uh, they're not pulling in the same direction. We're not going to deal with how to combine those. Uh, so they have to pull in the same or opposite directions. Okay. Now, uh, generally, we have to assign directions to these things, and remember with physics, directions are assigned with sign. So positive is usually associated with up, negative is usually associated with down. Positive is also associated with left, and negative is associated, uh, or sorry, positive with right and negative with left. So by assigning directions, we can actually figure out what the net force is going to be on something. So if I have a 25 newton block, so that means it weighs 25 newtons, and there's a 10 newton frictional force, and a 12 newton applied force, and then of course that 25 newtons means the force through gravity is 25 newtons, and that means the table's going to have to balance that with a normal force of 25 newtons. I can replace all of these forces with one force, the net force. So first I'm going to look in the vertical direction, and I'm going to see in the vertical direction the net force is 25 positive, so 25, plus, these are negative 25 newtons because they pull down, so plus negative 25 equals zero. So just like we've said before, this force balances that force. All we said now is they add up to zero, so that's nothing new. But now when I go to these two forces, Let's see, I have the net force equals, I have 12 newtons to the right plus negative 10 newtons because those are to the left, which is 2 newtons. And because that's positive 2 newtons, that means the net force is actually 2 newtons to the right. And so I can redraw this free body diagram with just the one force that summarizes all of them. So the two vertical forces cancel, and the only force that's left is this two Newton force to the right. And that's the force that's causing change. So that's what we call the net force. Uh, and we use the symbol sigma to indicate net force. It's a Greek letter, and it literally means sum of all the forces. Okay, so finding net force, not hard. Just add forces that are in the same direction, uh, and make sure that you assign the sign correctly.